Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RNA Music. Yeah, I have an RNA Music shirt. You, you do have one on. Yeah, it's one of the Force. Yeah, it's one a Force of tank. The Force tank top. I yeah. am not wearing. I really like this shirt, but it's not. Yeah. The chair is squeaky. I'm sorry. It's not an RNA Music t shirt, but if you want one, you can go to our Teespring store in the description and get you an RNA shirt. Shameless tags. And yeah, we uh, <laughs> we have your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> Texas. It's where Texas. we are. Yep. So excited. We're going to answer some questions for you guys in this FAQ style video. Woo -woo. Let's get to it. We'll do it. All right, welcome back. For all of our regular viewers to another episode of Ask RNA, I forget which one it is. 657 or something. I don't know. Actually, no, it's not 600. No, it's five. It's like 250. I don't know. There's a lot. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back if you're a regular viewer. If you are new here, mm -hmm. you've never seen us before in your life, go ahead and subscribe. Just do it yeah you'll enjoy our videos it. i'm sure it'll brighten your day yeah regular guys and Week. gals y'all thumbs it up thumbs it up yeah. all right this is uh our video where we answer questions faq style we've That's been doing right. this for years now uh -huh. years and uh let's get right to the questions we'll have more videos soon unboxing guitars some music lesson videos coming out mm -hmm. i've been thinking about some videos I need to do music lessons, got some music yep. update stuff. Yep. But right now it's Ask Arnie. Yep. It's Thursday night. <laughs> Angela wants to go home. Yes. Let's answer some questions. Quickly. Psycho G, <laughs> question number one. Hashtag KTMA, hashtag drop C. Mine's not much of a question, but rather a request. Mm. Can I get a couple of Hetfield slaps? That's some funny stuff. Thanks and stay healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I also love the heady slaps. Yes. Slapping headies yeah. all the time. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Psycho G. Next question. Brian Strausser, hashtag ukes for Ainge, finally. Yay! You got, you finally got some ukes, Angela. Dun, dun, dun. A whole passel of uh, ukuleles. <laughs> Uh, he says, VR viability is about five years away. The Wuhan virus will get us all eventually, just like the Spanish flu. <laughs> the Wuhan. Uh, we just need to use common sense. Is it better to tune your guitar down or to buy a baritone? Would that give you another cool guitar for the collection? Hashtag mm. drop C, hashtag KTMA. Great question, Brian. Yeah. Um... Do both. I tune my guitar. I do not own a, a baritone. I was about to say I tune my guitars down mm -hmm. because I don't have a baritone. Right. So, but I also don't tune down really lower than maybe drop C. Right. Maybe C standard. Mm -hmm. That's usually about as low as I tune on a regular basis. Right. If I you're, tune. <laughs> I tune. I did. If you were going to tune your guitar mm -hmm. or ukulele lower than that, mm -hmm. a baritone probably would be a good idea. Right. Um, I have played on a baritone. Truck driver Sean came by on one of his visits driving through Texas and he mm -hmm. was checking out um, our Devil Cat Jimmy amp we got and he had, I think it was a PRS mm -hmm. uh, baritone, SE. I think, I can't remember. But he had one. And I played it. I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. If you're doing the drop tune stuff, it's nice. Um, you know. I tuned down. I have yet to buy one. Uh, I might. I've eyeballed them a few times, but I've never just like, oh, man, I really need to get one. I just tune my right. guitars down and kind of reset them up and stuff. So. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. But sure, you should probably have one. <laughs> I mean, why not have one? You should have one just because. <clears throat> yeah, why not? Yeah. You might, they might be more stable in lower tunings than, you know, a regular guitar tuned down. But, right. Uh, buy one and tune down your regular guitars. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Brian. Next question, Bubba Fang. 
So either of you think there will ever be another guitar god mm -hmm. and real singers, such as Dimebag and Aretha? <laughs> How about bands with all that's happening? Will it uh, all go to VR and social media? Take mm -hmm. care. God bless everyone. Have a good week. Hashtag drop C. Take care of each other. Okay. Yeah. Will there ever be another guitar god? The likes of Dimebag Daryl. I'm assuming he also means, you know, Eddie Van Halen. Jimmy Page, you know, <laughs> uh, those kind of guys. Um, or will there ever be another diva, the equivalency of Aretha? Oh, there's been many. Right. But are there any right now? Do you think going forward there's going to be? Not with, not with the kind of, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know Aretha Franklin's life to know if she was classy or not. I don't know that about her. But um, there are artistic legacy yes i maybe to a certain generation there might be you know somebody that you know is aretha-esque to them i don't think so yeah will there ever be someone think, who has i think, I think she was impact. just a she was like just a you know a star <laughs> in the that just happened to hit at the right time in a in music history. That's kind of like, will there ever be another Elvis Presley? Yeah, never. Or will there ever be another The Beatles? Right, no, never. Probably not. Will no. there ever be another Metallica? No. Because it's pretty much all been done. It's just yeah. kind of reimagined. But for their era and age, it was never done before. It had never been done before. It had never, ever been done before. You either had church music or you pretty much had like classical. And it wasn't... You know, there wasn't like red dirt, you know. It, that stuff was just kind of starting to form in the countries and the hills and then in jazz clubs. And it was like all of a sudden birthed in this time of the night, early 1900s. And then it just kind of exploded like late 1800s, early 1900s, where mm -hmm. people were performing in clubs. Like that just wasn't, you know, went from saloons to clubs. And, um, you know, vaudeville type stuff. But I don't, the, even in those de eight days and era, it was so new and it was so big, you know. That's why nowadays you see people doing sensationalism more than they are artistic because that stuff hasn't been done. You know, coming out buck naked to perform a piece or something. which Dressed in meat. Which most of the female artists, which is sad because they that's the next step in their minds where they think they should go is nudity. Get naked. Because their talent attention. can only take them so far. Their talent right. can only take them so far. Where Aretha Franklin didn't have to do anything. Most of the time she wore ball gowns or she was sitting behind a piano. She didn't have to do anything. Her voice did all the talking. Yeah. Adele was probably the... This generation's yeah equivalency of I can see that you know but she she withdrew so fast in little spurts where she was going through some stuff that that she did I don't think she got I mean, a lot of people know who Adele is don't get me wrong but not right. at the momentum that Aretha had in her day you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I don't think it was you know, I think people under her voice a, wise was like what? I think people so, under a certain age. So was Amy Winehouse. Know who Adele you know? is? Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question, Bubba Fang. Um, I think there will always be. Every generation will have its heroes, <laughs> that right? Was, that was you. that was me. Uh, that was I, all you. I mean, obviously. Oh, it's Brad Browning. Hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. He, he should. Well, I'm going to send it to him, and now he's going to because he had a cameo. <laughs> Brad. B Brad. Um, I think every generation has its heroes. Like, there are people right now, younger players who, like, you have bands like Periphery that have come out with, like, Misha Mansoor and mm -hmm. uh, the other two guys. <laughs> the other two guys that aren't Misha. You, Crap. You can. I have no idea who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know what I'm saying, but there are a segment of guitar players who like love Periphery mm -hmm. and like Misha is their god. Now they don't they don't worship at the altar of Dimebag Daryl. They some worship Well some some people do, but there's a segment of people like this is their guy. Misha's their guy now. And um 
animals as leaders. Uh, Tosin Abasi is there. Like, you don't know who these are. You've never heard of them. It's not like it's James Hetfield. But right. they're, they are like lower level yeah. people. But there's a segment of the guitar community who's like, that's their guy. Yeah. Like Jeff Loomis. Yeah. Jeff Loomis is, you know, that level. But he, of course, he's not a young guy. Jeff's older than I am. But, mm -hmm. but not like only people into DeGent. <laughs> that kind of or progressive newer progressive metal will know those names mm -hmm. right the like the general population will not know those names like most people right. even if you're not into rock music or guitar music have heard of Eddie Van Halen they're like oh yeah they know who that is that's a guy who was very married to Valerie Bernelli <laughs> yeah. you know mm -hmm. or that kind of thing um, some people who are not metal heads would know who Dimebag Daryl is because that's a mm -hmm. It's from Texas, larger than life. Um, you know, I, I don't think there will be heroes that achieve that level of hero worship, but I think every generation will have its heroes. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's kind of like one of those things. Like, do you think that anybody was ever going to surpass Mozart or Beethoven in their day? They probably, there was people. They were like, "Will there will never be anyone who surpasses Mozart mm -hmm. as the." most amazing musician of all time, right? Right. And yet, here we, we all realize, oh yeah, Mozart's great. Oh, well, you don't listen to Mozart. People are like, Aretha, dime back. <laughs> right. So, I, I, you know, there will always be heroes. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they'll reach icon status. I don't think they'll be, I, I think, think becoming already, an think icon going done. forward is gonna be extremely difficult. Yeah, it's already, I think a lot of it has already been done. Icon is a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, the Michael Jacksons of the Stevie Wonders or, you know, any, right. any person that was just like, what? What, are the, what is happening? Well, what is will that? anyone ever have the impact on pop music that Michael Jackson had? Nope. Probably not. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't know who Michael Jackson is. Yeah, that's true. But what they don't understand is that most of what they see is because of Michael and Janet Jackson when it comes to music videos and dancing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's because of who they are. The Jackson 5. Great question. You guys and gals, talk amongst yourselves. Let us know. Do you think there will ever be icons in the level mm -hmm. of what we consider icons in the future? Yeah. Great question. Next question. Fat. Oh, nope. oh wait. Second question. How about the bands with all that? Oh, happening? sorry, Bubba Fang. How about bands with all that is happening? We'll all go to VR and social media. That's a good question, man. There's a lot of people who are mm -hmm. um, contemplating it. You know, they can't tour right now. Right. Like, so they can't tour, they can't play clubs, they can't do that. I think what's going to happen is you have a segment of bands who have, from the beginning, mm -hmm. embraced social media, have their own YouTube channels, do that kind of stuff. Periphery, we were yes. just talking about, is a good one. Those guys are on top of the YouTube thing, the social yeah. media thing. Josh Groban. Josh Groban. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are, there are artists who have embraced new media mm -hmm. and I think they have an outlet and have a way to still connect with their fans to put out product and content yeah. and things. Well, it's like Bernie Herms. Y'all don't probably know who he is. Y'all um, don't know who Bernie is. <laughs> Bernie Herms Angela does. And, like his, and his wife, Natalie Grant, um, they actually put on a concert. They got to go to um, a famous hall, not... Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. Radio City um, Music Hall or something. No, it was, it was just like this small opera house. Mm -hmm. And um, got to perform. It was just the both of them. Yeah. And like one, like a couple of cameramen out in the audience. And that was it. Because Bernie plays the piano beautifully. And he has played with many people. And he's written many songs um, that a lot of people Grammys. don't know that he wrote them. Um, but he was playing the piano and she was just singing. It was just... You know, the both of them. Mm -hmm. That was it. And so, they, but they had this whole production. Hey, check us out. We're going to go live on da 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 This, 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 and this, this. And um, they did that. And so did Josh Groban, which Bernie Herms played, accompanied Josh Groban. They, yeah. It was before the COVID, but because they recorded it as a televised special, a pre-recorded with the studio audience. Mm. It was a whole thing, a taping, that they were gonna televise it later, but, but because of all the COVID stuff, they just went ahead and did it just a YouTube 
yeah. type thing. And um, I think they might have televised it also, but it was also, it was because of they had to cancel everything because of COVID. Yeah. I don't know. I think there are bands and artists who have already embraced the media and I think mm -hmm. they're going to be fine. I yeah. think you're going to have the old guard, the old bands who are like, no, we tour and this is, we sell records and they're still stuck. Yeah. And, you know, the music industry of 10, 15, 20 years ago, and I think they're going to struggle yeah. to catch up probably. But. Well, it's hard to go from the energy of the crowd to just a camera. Yeah. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's, when you feed off of that kind of energy, yeah, it's hard to just talk to a, to a, I get the same hype uh, of yeah when there's nobody in the room. We do it amazingly all the time. Yes, but we have each other, so we have that's that, true. and it's, you know that's the thing is that if they can focus on just the band, the energy of the band, then they could probably do it. But a lot of them won't because they do they love the the, the crowd, yeah. you know, singing along and hearing people that they aren't used to writing with and right. practicing with interact with them so it'll be it'll be pretty i think it'll be hard for a lot of people to get used to yeah now whether this is the new whatever going forward for the rest of all time mm -hmm. i don't know about that yeah but we'll see mm -hmm. next question now fat philosopher mm -hmm. what type of player should consider switching to a seven string guitar when should they make the switch right now do it Go buy another guitar. This instant. Right now. What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> I think the person who wants to learn songs that were written on seven string mm -hmm. should probably get one if they're obsessed with like if you love yes. Jeff Loomis, mm -hmm. who I'm a Jeff Loomis fan. I don't know have a seven string. I should get a seven string. You don't probably want need seven one. strings. I don't really want one. I know you don't. I don't We've already had this conversation when we had We had like two or three in the shop at Sometimes we've had know. seven strings here, and I played on them. And I thought maybe like, I should get. Uh, and then you've always been like, meh. Yeah, I think anyone <laughs> who's interested, like mm -hmm. if you have songs and artists that you want to play their music and they use sevens, mm -hmm. you should probably go buy a seven. Right. You know, or if you're just bored with six, you've explored all the possible. Boldly gone. <laughs> total most, possibilities. Most men have never gone before. <laughs> yeah, if you have exhausted. All the note selections on a six string guitar, you should probably go buy a seven. But, or if you just want one to mess with, go get one. The beautiful thing is you can get some very affordable sevens. Schecter, we're Schecter dealers. We've had some very affordable, like bolt-on neck Schecter mm -hmm. sevens at one point. I, mean, I think we had like a $400 one. You know, mm -hmm. you can dip your toes into the seven pool quite affordably nowadays right right um uh, it's not going to be the most amazing seven string ever but you can get your toes wet your toes you get your fingertips uh on some seven strings pretty affordably but you know you should probably just try one if you're somewhat interested i've played a few a couple times and i thought man i think uh but i find myself playing a lot of music that's on a six string or when i write my own stuff mm -hmm. A six just kind of works for me. Yeah. I'd still kind of like a seven just to maybe dabble with it a little bit more. It's Grant. Telling me who to fix my transmission. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. Uh, when should they make the switch? Whenever they can afford it, whenever they want to. Right now. So. This moment. Yeah. Buy a used one, test it out, and that way if you don't like it, you can sell it and you haven't really lost any money. If you go buy a new one and you decide you don't like sevens, you're gonna take a hit financially. So go buy a used seven. And if you really love it, then you know splurge and get you what you want what what you want. What you really, really want. What you really want. want. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Fat Velocer. Next question. Big Johnson, hashtag drop C. When you receive a guitar from the manufacturer, do you allow it to acclimate before unboxing it? Some retailers recommend you acclimate your guitar before unboxing it. What's your thoughts? Well, great question. Uh, 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 uh. I have this box from Tajima. Uh, uh, uh. How long has this box been here? Un uh, two weeks? not been two weeks. 
Maybe it's been two weeks. I have one that's been acclimating for two weeks now. Just about ready. Squeeze it. I'm listening. I'm listening to the heartbeat. It's almost ready. I recommend nice and toasty. minimum two weeks <laughs> acclimation. <laughs> Don't fall. No, I just I haven't had time to open it because I'm gonna I'm gonna film it. I've got I gotta film myself unboxing this so we can do an unboxing video. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had time. Um, it kind of depends. In all seriousness, it kind of depends. Like, uh, let's say it's in the winter, mm -hmm. and your guitar in a box has been, you know, on a FedEx truck. Or a UPS truck where it's like 27 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. And then you bring it into your shop or your home or your apartment or wherever, and it's a toasty 76 degrees. Mm -hmm. And this thing is 20 degrees. In that situation, I would absolutely let it sit. Acclimate. Acclimate. Let it slowly. What'd you say? Acclimate. <laughs> The world. I thought you said something else. <laughs> What'd you say to me? What'd you say to me? What'd you say to me? <laughs> Absolutely, I would let that happen. Now, if it's, you know, springtime, springtime, fall, whatever, where it's like, hey, it's, you know, like 70 degrees outside, it's about 70 degrees in your place, it comes in, you know, then maybe not so much. But I think it, it's just, there's variables. Or if it's stupid hot. Like it's 105 degrees in Texas. Which means that it's about 120, 130 in the back of a truck. Oh my God. Like so hot. So hot. Make some cookies. Oh my God. So hot. In July, uh, yeah, heat index of 105. Mm -hmm. It's even hotter inside of a warehouse or a truck. Mm -hmm. And you bring it into your crispy, cool 68 degrees. <laughs> Yeah, with home. We don't keep ours at 16. Oh man, we can't afford that. We're not rich. <laughs> no, heck no. Golly. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a cool, brisk 78 in the house right now. <laughs> right. Um, you know, same thing. I would I would let it acclimate. So it just sort of depends. Where is it coming from? How far has it come? How many zones has it been through already? It may already be just kind of effed, you know, because you're like Oh man, it's, it was in, came through California where it was cool, and then it went through Death Valley, and then it went over mm -hmm. the mountains in Colorado, and now it's, you know, it may already be through, been through a bunch of changes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, it just sort of depends. That's the idea. Yeah. So I'm, I usually do let them sit most of the time. When they show up here at the shop, it, it, it depends on the weather outside and what the weather's like in here. Mm -hmm. um, Usually I do let them sit just because when they show up, I'm busy and they have to wait anyways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? Tell us below. Next question. Just Fun Guitar. Hey team, thanks for replying. We're on team Just Fun Guitar. Yes, so excited. Yes. Uh, hashtag drop C, hashtag KTMA. New question, what is best in life? <laughs> Well, Conan would say to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of their women. I think that's best. Yes. Do you think that's best? That's my motto. I have a <laughs> tattooed on my back. She does, <laughs> actually. No, You're doesn't. not going to see it, but she does. <clears throat> I think what's is, best in life is Texas. Not right now, it's not. But that's I just, another subject. I just kid. Um, what's best in life? Family. Friends, a crisp afternoon with a cool breeze. It's a perfect Sunday. <laughs> My perfect Sunday. Um, you know. Not hot miss. A weekend day where you're not working. A clean house. Laughter. But that's the best in life. Um, I think. Yeah. Good health. Good health. Good relationships. Good, you know. Good attitude. Yeah. That's what's best. And to crush your enemies. And to crush your enemies. See them before you and hear the lamentation of 
the women. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> you guys tell us what is best in your life. What do you think is best in life? <laughs> Walking Dead is the best. Hashtag Dropsy. Let's see. I could ask a COVID question or a riot question. Oh, Jesus. But I won't. Okay. <laughs> Too much politics going on. My question mm -hmm. is, have y'all had any supply disruption because of everything that is happening? I ordered one of those Harley Benton vintage cabs back at the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. Clear customs on June 11. Mm -hmm. As of this posting, it still hasn't moved. It hasn't mm -hmm. moved since. Um, A little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Um... Today I had to I had to order uh, some EMG pickups and mm -hmm. I called them. I've been emailing them, and they're wonderful people. I love EMG, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. awesome. And then I was like, Hey, are you guys uh, shipping? I'm like, are you building and shipping? Because in California, you know, the restrictions are a little bit different than they are in Texas and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, Yeah, we can't do anything right now. Like a few months ago, they can't do anything. Yeah, we had to go home, had to close down, all that sort of stuff. They're back. Back again. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. We can uh, get that to you in like a week. So I'm like, sweet. So currently right now, this moment, uh, what what day is it? July 2nd? Is it the 2nd? I don't even know. Yes, today, tomorrow's the 3rd. It is the 2nd, you're right. 4th of July is on Saturday. Um, as of July 2nd, not too much. Like Diderio, they were out of uh, stock on some things because they were shut down. Production was shut down. Most of the company's sales was still going on. Like you'd still order, we like ukuleles. You could still order stuff mm -hmm. and they would ship it. But a lot of them weren't doing any manufacturing. Right. Or they had a hold up of stuff coming over, you know, from if they had stuff coming from China or wherever. Right. As of this moment right now, mm, not, not really. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. But in the past few months, there have been some moments where it's like, well, I can't order this because they're out of stock. Right. They're out of them and they're not manufacturing. But right. seems like everything is a little bit back on track right now. As of July 2nd. Right. There you go. Thanks for the question, Walking Dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next question. 314 J-Rock with a question about singers. Oh, hey. I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear Angela's opinion. You know I got some. I know you do. Mm-hmm. So when a band's lead singer leaves, should the band hire a new singer and continue or start a new band with a new singer? Whenever a band gets a new singer, the fans tend to be hard on him because he doesn't sound like the old singer. One of my favorite bands is Run Rig. They're a popular Scottish rock band that retired after 40 years in 9 to 7. Nice. Run Rig's Scottish original rock. lead singer, Donnie Munro, left the band and Bruce Guthrow, <laughs> Munro Guthrow, took his place. Uh, Run Rig was able to remain popular after Donnie left the band. Creed was one of my favorite bands when I was younger. When Creed's lead singer Scott Stapp left, the remaining members started a new band called Alter Bridge and hired Miles Kennedy to be the lead singer. Bands like Flyleaf, Sick Puppies lost popularity after the original lead singers left. Why do some bands lose their, their, their popularity after getting a new singer while other bands remain popular after getting a new singer? Why do some people replace their singer and continue being successful and why do some bands replace their singer and not be successful. Because the talent lies on the popular, the swing of the popularity. Mm -hmm. So if the band got a new singer and remained successful, that means their singer wasn't that great. It was the band's musicians that were great. The music was great. Mm -hmm. You know, the quality of the, the sound, the guitar riffs, the fills, the, the goosebumps you get from just the sound, the, you know, all that. That's what was great. Now, if the band got a new singer and it didn't do well, that means everybody, the voice was was what carried the band. Uh, and the musicians weren't that great. Right. You know, so it's like they can look past the kind of stumbling of the musician. They can look past the stumblings of the musicians because that voice was just like, yes, oh my gosh, the way they hit that note, the way they have the, the crackle in their throat and all. You have a great band or, with an average singer. Or that singer was 
boing and <laughs> now were, you what? have a dog face as your lead singer oh. and no one wants to look at it. Why you gotta say dog face? Because. Well, you could just. Because that's true. Like if your lead singer before was a dog face and you got a good one, then they're like, what? He's fine. Or she's fine. Boing. And they can, you know, yeah, there's, why a lot, didn't, there's a lot why of Why didn't things. No Doubt just hire a new chick singer and continue on? Because no one can beat Gwen Stefani. Because no it wasn't really that, about the it band. Was the voice. It was about Gwen Stefani. I don't, I don't think of the band when I think of No Doubt. I think of Gwen Stefani's voice. With good music. Yeah. It was, was, yeah, it was but great music. But anybody could have been playing the bass and drums and guitar. Yeah. <laughs> like anybody could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my thought. Like it's just depending on the quality of whoever's left and it still becomes popular. That's why they were popular. Yeah. Whether it was the voice or it was the band. If yeah. they remained in the same momentum that they kept going whoever left was the weakest link. Right. Another band, ACDC. Yeah. So the original singer, you know, Bon Scott, everybody loved him, but then he died. Mm -hmm. And then they came, Brian Johnson came in and then they're like, how can anybody come in and replace Bon? Yeah. And because he had such a, you know, character to his voice it's like replacing freddie mercury yeah well see they came brian johnson came mm -hmm. in and they released back in black which mm -hmm. is their epic most epic album that yeah. sold the most records so why did acdc go on to even higher heights when they replaced their original singer well because their band was because the band was good pretty pretty awesome and i think Brian, I like Brian Johnson more That's what I'm saying. It's as like, a singer. You might, I mean, but if you already have a really good band, then when they add somebody and they keep that momentum, that means that person gelled right in with them and they just kept on going. Because yeah. you can't get a, you know, poop face, cotton <laughs> perfect. It was a perfect marriage. marriage. Yes, and then add it to a really good band because you are going to stumble and fall, yeah. you know. It's like having, but, you know, a meal that's, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's not epic. But it's good. All the ingredients are good. Mm -hmm. And then you lose one ingredient, but then you come and replace it with an even better ingredient. With higher quality. Higher quality. And it's like, yes. oh. Not to say that the other one was not good. It was good. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't great. amazing. <laughs> right. So like with Alter Bridge, Nicholas loves Alter Bridge. Our son, Nicholas, mm -hmm. loves Alter Bridge. And he found, because we cleaned out a back room here and I had a huge stack of CDs, and he found a Creed CD. And he's like, yep. what is this? Is this before? And he, he took this, he was like, son, it's right, it's, you know, whatever. It's mm -hmm. not that good. But he's been listening to it in his truck, and he's like, I kind of like this. I mean, it's not as good as Miles Kennedy. Right. Like, but well, I kind of like it. Yeah. He's like, I like this song, I like that it's song. It's a different, it's a different... Like, he, he had knew nothing when Creed was mm -hmm. at its pinnacle and, you know, millions of records yeah. and music no, videos. Scott like, he didn't did know what it did. Like yeah, yeah, Scott did what they did with them. And yeah. He was, you know. Miles he, is a significantly better singer. Yes. Than He's Scott more like a classically trained singer compared to... He's a singer. Yeah. Scott Stapp, not even a real singer, I don't know. I mean, he was just a singer, but I think it was just, you know, a bunch of friends kind of got together yeah, yeah. and out of the out of the group of them, who was the better singer? Yeah. Well, I am. But I think their I think music actually changed, too. I was telling Nicholas, like, they made a purposeful pivot to, like, okay, we're going to write differently. Mm -hmm. We're going to write, you know, songs differently. Mm -hmm. The band changed their way they wrote their music. Yeah, they changed their heartbeat. They got better, and they got a significantly better singer. Now, and they've achieved a lot of success. But have they achieved Creed level success? Probably not. But we're not. We're also not in the same time period. Creed was like pre, sort of Napster and the digital music and everything. Yeah. Everything's completely different they were now. On Total Request Live. Yeah, it's a whole different thing. But yeah. you know, that was one that popped in my mind was ACDC. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, your answer was great. Mm -hmm. I think you know, I think that's the right answer. Well, thank you. It depends. Mm -hmm. You can't replace a good singer with a worse singer and then do well. Right. 
you know, and sometimes bands you, have done that, and we haven't heard from yeah, them. And that. You, <laughs> so and and you, if you replace a singer who who is an okay singer with another okay singer, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to go. Almost like Newsboys. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Who was I thinking of the other day? That was like I I. But I, I don't like Newsboys now. I used to yeah. love Newsboys. It's a Christian band. I loved them the as a kid. I had the records. I had T-shirts, oh. everything. And then whenever they, whenever their lead singer guy left, mm -hmm. and they replaced it with, um, gosh, what's his name? Michael Tate. Michael Tate. I played a gig with Michael Tate. <laughs> Michael Tate um, from DC. I Talk. don't. I don't care. It was just like the. It was like that was a, a weird. It was like a reboot of DC Talk. That was a strange choice it to replace. It was very weird hearing Michael Tate's voice with it wasn't it wasn't Newsboys anymore. It was Michael Tate band. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say Black Sabbath because mm -hmm. once I, Ozzy quit or got fired, like mm -hmm. Ozzy exited the band and they got Ryan James Dio came in and there was a period of time with Black Sabbath where you know Dio is the singer and it's like I don't think that's the Sabbath people want to listen to. Like when they, people think of Black Sabbath, they think of Iron Man, mm -hmm. Paranoid, Wolfies. Children of the Grave, you know, like mm -hmm. Black Sabbath. Like they think the Aussie years. Mm -hmm. Of course so, they do. And so then of course, so I'll, you know, Aussie eventually came back because they're like, hey, if we want to make some money. This is what people want, you know. Van Halen's a very interesting one because some people they're very diehard David Lee Roth. Some people are, you know, Sammy Hagar. I think they kind of they're sort of equal, like both periods of Van Halen are, have their merits, but you know whatever. Mm. Sammy Hagar, significantly better singer than David Lee Roth. Makes me want to watch Wedding Singer. <laughs> <laughs> Licking the mic <laughs> like David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth, very much a showman and visual and outgoing, but not an amazing singer. So, Ooh. great question. Three fourteen J Rock, appreciate it. I like yes, sir. I like that conversation oh, very much. <laughs> I submit and have said this many times to my friend Adam from Warefoot. If you take James Hit Hetfield out of Metallica, there is no Metallica. Like you cannot replace James and Metallica and yes, have Metallica. Have. You can replace the bass player. You could they probably have. they have. Well, <laughs> yes. You could replace Lars. And I would still buy the next Metallica record and go see them live. You could replace Kirk. As long as there's James, there's Metallica. Yeah. Without James, there is no Metallica. Dang. You cold, bro. I'm just saying. You cold. I'm just saying. All right. There are no Led Zeppelin. Next question. Okay. <clears throat> next question. Stratocat62. I've been missing you two. Do you still have a couple of boys? I haven't seen them in so long that maybe they've grown and gone. Hope to see more of you in the future. My question is for the long forgotten bitter bass man, if you can still find him. What is the advantage of having an active bass? Is it just for recording or is it also helpful in live application? Thanks, Vinny. Hashtag drop C. Paul doesn't know. Like, Paul is not a gearhead. Like, he, I mean, most of his basses are active basses. Mm -hmm. But recently he's gotten a few that were passive and he's like, oh. I like these passive basses, but I think it's just because they're different. They're different. I and think he's different. He's all very different, but he wouldn't know the answer to that because he plays both. You know, I think they both have their strengths. You know, there's been a million great songs and tons of music recorded with passive bass and active bass. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's it's not a make or break. But recording, it's great. There are advantages, but Paul doesn't know. Right. Do we still have a couple of boys? We do not have boys. We have young men. <laughs> I was like, what happened to them? They're they all go? growing up. Well, our oldest is 20 and our youngest is 15. And they're both at home. They're yeah. just They just have their own lives. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I stopped doing the vlog videos on RNA's channel because mm -hmm. we used to like... I mean, we've been doing Ask RNA for a couple of years now, like once yeah. a week, usually on Fridays. And then on weekends, we did vlogs for a real long time. Yeah. Not a lot of people watch the vlogs. Yeah, like, you should put the, the Father's Day photo, like right here. Yeah, yeah. I'll put that up there. Okay. We still have them, 
We do have a vlog channel, but since I moved all of our vlog videos to the vlog channel, I've fallen down on editing them. Mm -hmm. And I have like six months of back videos I've got to put up. But uh, we do still have two children. Mm -hmm. They're massive. Yeah. Giant young men now. Mm -hmm. uh, which is great because they helped you move a bunch of furniture today. They did. Yes, we were moving my sister stuff out of her storage building into her new uh, rent house. And they were very helpful being the giant children that they are. Because <laughs> it was just them and me and my dad, who's 73. And, He's strong. And my, old, and my twin nephews, who were seven. Which they did. They helped. They grabbed did buckets. They? Yeah, they grabbed buckets yeah, and marched. Because they were excited to move into their new bedroom. They that's because Nicholas and Abe were moving in. They're like, yeah, no, you know. they were all on it. They were totally on it. But yeah, they the boys are they're big old boys that are just, you know... My protectors, my, yeah. my boys. <laughs> yeah, I flashed our, that picture. Our boys. Our boys so that we had them, together. Yes, they're both of ours. They're both me and I Angela. I carry both of those children in my belly. Both of them. From me. Yes. Their father <laughs> is here. Both of their father. So we didn't have one. He didn't have one and marry me and we had one together. I didn't have one from another marriage. He didn't have one from another marriage and then we got married. Not that that's wrong, but that is not our situation. That's not we our We only story. say that because here locally, <laughs> someone who's known me my whole life thought, asked me actually asked her. If what? I was his second wife. Because, because Nicholas looks so much more like me and Aiden looks so much more like her. That obviously, Nicholas, Nicholas was my son from my white wife, my Caucasian wife. Wow. And then Aiden <laughs> is our hybrid baby that we had together. Yes. <laughs> Didn't happen. I'm like, no. What? How do you? Like, but we've been married for 21 years. We've been married for 21 years. <laughs> we have a 20 year old son. Lord That's more mercy. of a local clearing up things for people locally who are. Well, even for people who see the picture, a lot of people That's true. just assume. That's true. And because that is a common thing. Assuming. There is a lot of blended families. Yes. It's, that's and very that's normal fine. today. For their story, that that is not our story. Not our. So story. to assume and apply that to our story is not. not it's not. It's not very not. It's not nice. So. There you go. There you go, Strato Cat. We do still have children. Yeah. I, getting, I did actually edit. Up. I did edit a vlog video the other day, a couple days ago, that I do need to upload to the vlog channel. I'll put a link to our vlog channel down below. <clears> so if you want to go get caught up on vlog crap, <laughs> I mean, it's, there's some guitar stuff, or life, and there. whatever. <laughs> there's some shooting stuff. There's animals. There's you know, I'm gonna try. I'm trying to catch up on that stuff. So you can go check that out. We just still do have children. All right. <laughs> Last and final question. Woohoo! So excited. It's 9 yeah. o'clock. 9 so p.m. Thursday night. So I'm getting tired. sweaty. Oh, yeah, it is. Isn't it? Dactar. <sighs> hashtag drop C. Hashtag KTMA. Just got my Green Force shirt. He bought a shirt from our Teespring store. Yay! Thank you, because now we can buy groceries. Yeah, we'll get the transmission fixed. Oh, my God. It's not going to be <laughs> enough to fix it. We need about. A lot. Three. Three or four hundred more t-shirt purchases. <laughs> Three or four hundred more t-shirt purchases, purchases, and we should be able to fix the transmission that went yes. out on our truck today. So, somebody go buy four hundred t-shirts. <laughs> uh, oh lord! Do you think Help that us. inlays on the fretboard affects tone? Question mark. EP? Question mark. Also, students link. Question mark. Happy Friday. <laughs> I forgot because last last week I talked about uh, my student Kaylin who had just uploaded some music to you know YouTube so you could go listen to her song that he wrote she wrote mm -hmm. and I forgot to put the link in but the link is in that description of last week's Ask R and A yes. so it's there you can go check out I did see already that she's got about 25, 26 views yes. so twenty five of our R and A viewers went over and listened to her song. Awesome. And Thank one you or two even left a comment. I'm like, sweet guys, that's awesome. So nice. Y'all are so, so amazing. nice. Um, okay, uh, EP question mark. My EP is not progressing at all. He's pumping them brakes. 
<laughs> I've been busy with life. Yes, you have. Uh, I just put up a video, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, talking about the EP that this I'm chair doing. Is uncomfortable. With the bitter bass fan. You want to oh, my tailbone. You want to switch <laughs> my chairs? No, it's okay. Okay. I'll survive. There was an update video just a day or two ago uh, about the Bitter Bass Man project. Mm -hmm. Awkward pause. The Nobodies? No. I don't know which band it is. It's either Awkward Pause it's or the awkward Nobodies. Pause, that's or the Nobodies. If it's awkward, it's Paul. Yeah. Awkward Pauls. <laughs> awkward Pauls. Mm -hmm. um, now, with that situation, with me and Paul releasing music, those are going to be singles. So the mm -hmm. first single that was supposed to come out in January <laughs> is almost ready. So maybe by the end of July, the uh, very first one... Where I recorded drums and there was videos and stuff will be out. Um, I'm finishing up some guitar parts on the second single that mm -hmm. I'm working on with Paul. Because he keeps just nagging me. Oh my gosh. Paul. Like, has your, has your, you record the guitar parts? I'm like, nah, I'm busy. He's like, okay. <laughs> tears. <laughs> Silent tears. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I gotta go record those guitars. Yeah, you do. So I'm working on that. I'm going to film some of that for you guys. Like you saw me just a day or two ago fixing some guitar parts. I'm going to continue mm -hmm. that stuff. No idea on my personal music. I feel like a moron because I've been talking about it for about eight years now. Eight years. That's okay. So one of these days, well, you know, Paul's song that I just worked on a couple days ago has been 15 years, 17 years in the works. So, <laughs> you know, I guess it's only fair we finish that 18 year old oh song my gosh. before the mm -hmm. other ones. So. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, the update on that. Do I think that inlays on the fretboard affect tone? Mm, I don't think so. No. I don't think so either. I do believe the guitar is a system and that it is its various components combined together can affect the tone. Like the bridge material affects the tone slightly. Mm -hmm. The nut material mm -hmm. affects the tone slightly. Mm -hmm. Pickups affect the tone significantly mm -hmm. you know wood affects the tone slightly mm -hmm. like anything that affects the way the string vibrates mm -hmm. affects the tone i don't i think inlays don't do much the least amount of effect mm -hmm. <laughs> would be from the fretboard inlays gotcha I don't think that the, does matter that much. Unless you have like a wild audio guitar where the inlay is like this giant square that's about the size of the fret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that whole thing is just plastic. Maybe on a wild audio guitar. But for the most part, I don't think inlays have much to do with it at all. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Those were several questions, Daktar. I appreciate it. And that's it. Final question. Now we can go home and have dinner. Do have we had dinner? We have not had dinner. No, we haven't. What's for dinner? I mm, peanut butter sandwiches. There you go. <laughs> All right. um, I'm sure Aiden's hungry though. Yeah, he probably is. All right. That's it. Yeah. Thank you guys for all the questions this week. I hope you enjoyed our answers. Please Yay. leave your commentary below with your thoughts on each of these questions, if you have thoughts. And mm -hmm. uh, if you have a question for next week, please leave it below. I didn't even put in the typewriter sound last week. I was like, oh man. Too much editing. Just dropping the ball. I am dropping all the balls. All of them. And uh, yeah, so leave your question for next week. And if you watch this whole video, someone was sad that last week was, was only 24 minutes. Oh. They were like, oh man, it's only 24 minutes. I'm like, oh. Ask more questions. See? Well, don't ask too many. You know that we'll, we'll answer I enjoyed it questions. being 24 minutes because it didn't take me four hours to edit. Right. So 
24 minutes. It's 20 great. to 35 minutes is a good time. It is. We're going to have to set a timer and just shut it off. After. And done. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. We can't answer any more questions. It'd be like, We're dun, done. dun, dun. That's why I can't get my EP done because of <laughs> editing Ask RNA videos. It's really what it is. It is good. Uh, but if you haven't watched this entire video, which who knows how long it is, probably an hour, uh, we have secret hashtag of the day. If you'll type that in with your question and or comment or just by itself, you will be an elite few people who have watched the entire video in all its entirety. Mm -hmm. Cumulatively. It doesn't have to be in one sitting. If it's in one sitting, that's even better, actually. But if you do it in a couple of sittings, that's fine. Um, super secret, just for you legends out there. What is our secret hashtag of the day, Miss Pretty Pretty? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hashtag icon. Why? Because we talked about that earlier. Aretha oh. Franklin, Dimebag oh. Daryl. Will there ever be any other icons? Like them. I mean, yeah, sure, I guess. Well, I gave you a chance to select one. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Or hashtag new singer. Sure. Mm -hmm. Whichever one. Either one of those. If you're a super, super legend, you'll put How about one. hashtag no EP yet? That's not nice. Don't put that one. Okay. That hurts my feelings. I'm sorry. At a deep... I said yet. Visceral level. Yet. <laughs> Yet implies it will happen. Yes. It's not going to happen. Oh. It might happen. See? I See, you hurt your feelings more than I did. At least I had hope. Leave those hashtags below. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see y'all in the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation. You know all those kids that like music and stuff. <laughs> all those kiddos who <laughs> want to put on concerts VR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Digitally. will never play on a huge stage. Oh, oh man! Don't say that. It's they nice. will. They, they will. will. They will. Unless we have a nuclear fallout war, then they're probably not worried about music. But until then, until the nuclear fallout, let's keep the music alive. <laughs> Bye y'all. Bye. Hashtag Fallout. <laughs> I love Fallout. I'm gonna go play some Fallout tonight or edit fallout video. Fallout New Vegas. <laughs>